And we're going to be talking, first of all, about the somewhat surprising news, I think is what I called it in the description of the video, that the Day of Reckoning, which sounds like a WWE pay-per-view, in fairness, and is in Saudi, which again, <laughs> there are parallels, um, will take place, or will be broadcast rather, on The Zone globally, not on TNT. We got the impression that Frank Warren, if there was a lead promoter here in the UK of that Saudi show, December 23rd, it was Frank Warren. But we haven't had a chance to catch up with him just yet. Eamon, I know you spoke to Eddie Hearn um, several times last week. You're like his new best mate. Um, after the Katie Taylor win, which we're going to be talking about later on, you spoke to him again. You asked him about it being on the zone. He said it was massive for the zone. Uh, no mention of TNT. I'm assuming, will it be the zone exclusively, do we think? I'm not too sure. Uh, what was it announced in the statement? It said that there will be additional broadcasting uh coming or available or something of words to that effect as I jumbled them up a little bit. But the point being that there is more news to come on whether this is exclusive specific to the UK or not. I have the feeling with that little sentence there that was said in the statement that there is more to come. That This won't be an exclusive that Eddie Hearn and DAZN have this on in the UK of their own accord. There might be Sky involved. TNT might still get a slice of the pie too. So much more developers to come. It's interesting because Eddie, who's somewhat often the, the silver-tongued man that he is, the charmer that he is, is often loose-lipped on these things, but he's kept tight shut with announcements and let the announcements happen from the Saudi's hand. So didn't give much away when I asked him beforehand. Didn't give much away afterwards as well, too. So developments to come as well. I think I would imagine that there is another broadcaster involved, but I don't think that's yet resolved as to who has those rights yet. Yeah, I would have thought that if TNT were involved, they would have announced it at the same time as the zone or at least soon after. Um, you might see in the chat, we've got a poll up already. And we're going to be talking about this subject a lot more. So you might want to reserve your vote until you've heard, you know, Eamon and I's arguments either way. But we're asking who is the most powerful promoter, boxing promoter in the UK, Frank Warren or Eddie Hearn, or who is the more powerful of the two, I think is how we worded it. A few diehard Ben Shalom fans out there. Um, but yeah, Eddie Hearn versus Frank Warren, the eternal battle um, for boxing's heart and soul. Who who is the who is who is on top at the moment? If you can handle that image, let's go to the chat. You've waited long enough, um, so let's see some of your comments. They're flying through. Someone said, "Nice Christmas jumper, Danny." I just saw. I'm not sure who that was. I'll give them their due credit when I come back to it. Um, let's go through some of your comments. Uh, Anthony Joshua versus Otto Valin and Deontay Wilder versus Joe Parker and big baby soon, man. Yes, Andre Newby. Uh, we're looking forward to the show also. Oh, and then Andre Newby says, CM Punk, CM Punk. Yes, I love it. We may not be in Chicago, but it's in our hearts. Oh, it's Thunder Road. Nice for Danny to be already wearing his ugly Christmas jumper. I kid. Mate, I don't mind. I'll take it. I've got an actual, oh, no, I had an actual Christmas jumper. It doesn't fit me anymore, unfortunately. It was a uh, Brudolf. And it had uh, Rudolph chugging a beer, which I thought was pretty uh, dadtastic. Uh, Raj Anwar says, as soon as the event's over, Warren and Hearn return to hammering each other. It's a very interesting point, um, Raj, because looking at recent interviews with both of them, they are, it's obvious, more complimentary about each other than they have been even over a few weeks ago. It's crazy. You know, there's no, they're, they're not criticising each other about stuff outside of December 23rd either. There does seem to be, a temporary ceasefire or, and it might be not right to use this in light height context, but I've done it now, a humanitarian pause in hostilities between the two boxing promoters. Uh, Danny Boy taking inspiration from Frank Butcher with today's rig. Love it. Oh, you pay. That's my best uh, Frank Butcher impression. Uh, Jason Gavin, if only it were a real one, I'd get starstruck, would say, would fans get double charged? Rest of card on BT, but AJ fight on the zone. It said on the DAZN press release uh, that Deontay Wilder against Joseph Parker is on DAZN as well. So I don't know if it'll be the whole card, but certainly those two fights will be on DAZN uh, for nineteen ninety nine, which I think is a very reasonable price if it includes the whole card. Uh, Mr. Khan looks like he's had a late night. That's Raj Anwar again. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're I all late nights for Raymond. We're working very hard here at Seconds Out. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's on me. Um S. Clayton, the, fa the, the famous Simon Clayton, says Hearn by about 12 miles, referring to the poll, who is on top at the moment. Uh, Jack Dutton, could someone wake me up when this is actually starting, please? Jack, we're here, mate. Come on, don't troll. We're here. We're here for you. 
It's on Jack Press Live, says S. Clayton. Thanks, Simon. Uh, Andre Newby talking about Punk against Cena 2011. Oh, that was one night stand. Was that? No, that wasn't one night stand, was it? Or was it? Eamon, do you remember? Was it one night stand? Eamon's gone. Sorry about that. Yeah, it was SummerSlam, wasn't it? Ah, yes. Well, no, he returned no. SummerSlam. That wasn't when he won the title. Money in the Bank. It was Money, Money in the bank. bank. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, one night stand was when Rob Van Dam beat John Cena the previous year, I think. Anyway, enough wrestling chat for now. Can't make any guarantees for further on. But yeah, Eamon, I was just saying in response to one of the comments, there does seem to be a bit of a, a ceasefire between Hearn and Warren while all this is going on. They're not caning each other about even subjects outside of um, December 23rd. And they did meet in person for the first time at a press conference that, that you were at. Um, what, what do you make of it? And, and you know, do you think there is a, a temporary kind of, uh, what's the word, a thaw, a thaw in hostilities? Yeah, definitely. I think they've downed tools on the back and forth for now whilst there's a pretty penny to be earned for their fighters. And Hearn said as much as well to the words of that effect that they wouldn't be doing the best for their clients. The clients are their boxers. The clients are also their back pockets. If they don't take up this offer, if they don't down the tools in the back and forth and potentially scupper the opportunities that they have right now. So therefore, they met in a room for five minutes, George Warren orchestrated this meetup, shut doors. No one got to see anything. No one got to capture anything. They had this conversation. They talked a little bit about fights and they said to themselves, let's not be idiots. Let's not let ourselves get in front of this. Let's not let the egos take over and take over involved. So I can imagine here that they've had that conversation and they've decided that both of them for now, for now, maybe we'll see a return to form in the future of a bit of back and forth but for now whilst there's an opportunity to earn big fights earn big paydays for their fighters too payday. they don't <laughs> payday payday they don't make sure that their words their trade traded words cost the trade for leather on the night but also you gotta look at this as well people complain about this and my, myself as well too all the promoter back and forth whilst we might have been guilty in the past of things like that isn't always the best for the sport Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. We can leave the conc those conclusions for another day. Um, but for now, it seems to be getting the fight is their opportunities. I'll refer you to a recent uh, Frank Warren interview by Radio Rahim that carried the title, Eddie Hearn is a shit shoveler. And just how many views <laughs> that got, that people have still got a real appetite for the promoter back and forth. Uh, that is certainly the case. Um, Stuart Maloney says, look at the shows week in, week out. Matchroom are on a different level. Uh, Jason Gavin says, both waiting for that Saudi contract to run out. And Andre Newby says, Sky Sports had good cards in 2020. <laughs> wow. Take that, take that on the chin, uh, Sky. But yeah, um, it's an interesting one. Frank Warren has spent, I don't know how many years now, but certainly in the last few when I've been interviewing him, slagging off the zone. He's called it the app. He's called it dead zone. He's criticised the viewing figures. He said it's an unsustainable business model. Um, obviously, referring to his own time at Box Nation, how they struggled at times to make that work and ultimately, you know, moved to, to TNT or BT as it was then. So how can you how can you marry the two? And it's a question I'll be asking, Warren, if I get the chance to speak to him this week, is how can you go from slagging off the zone and basically calling it a flawed model for years and then putting your biggest card of the year, the biggest card of the year in boxing, onto that platform, even if it's in conjunction with TNT, why would you see the benefit of it if previously you, you feel it's a dead model? So that's going to be an interesting one to, to bring up with Warren. I'm, not, I'm sure we'll have an answer for it by the time we speak. It'll be well briefed. Um, but I think it's good to have as many eyes on it as possible if it is the zone in conjunction with other platforms. I think if you're a TNT subscriber and you don't get the opportunity to see this, knowing that Frank Warren, who is the lead promoter on TNT, or the only promoter on TNT, is the, uh, you know, a key figure in this December 23rd Day of Reckoning show, and then you're already paying your subscription fee and you either have to pay extra to watch it on TNT pay-per-view or extra to watch it on zone. when you're already a subscriber and you've watched all the other Frank Warren events or Queensbury Promotions events, you'd probably be a bit miffed. I would say. Um, and talking about the, the shows week in, week out, um, 
match room have just coming off a, a good show in Dublin. Although I would say the undercard wasn't particularly impressive. And since there have become, there's been a proliferation of TV promoters in the UK. I think the uh, undercards all round have suffered as a result. So I'm not sure the gap is quite as big as some of the comments would make out. But in fairness, some of the Frank Warren kind of Friday night shows at York Hall and the Next Gen or whatever their version of Next Gen is called, they haven't been amazing. Um, but some of the big events have, have still pretty much delivered. You know, you look at the two Joe Joyce, Yule Zhang uh, headline shows, I thought they were both very good. So I think it's a mixed bag with both promoters. But it is interesting that it looked like Frank Warren was kind of the key UK figure in a show on December 23rd in Saudi, which apparently is, involves 12 different promoters in total. But then it's going to the broadcaster most commonly associated with Eddie Hearn. Um, yeah, I think there's still a lot of detail to come out. I mean, let's look a little bit wider, though. Maybe it's a play for now for the point of, we don't know the situation with the undisputed heavyweight fight. Who's going to be broadcasting that? Is that, a, yeah, you'd think that, look, it's Fury and Usyk, and that would land on TNT Sports pay-per-view. But with the Saudis controlling who gets what and paying for what they want, they can, they, I believe, would have the control as to who gets to broadcast this. So is a pretty penny being saved right now for this fight in lieu of what's going to happen next year so they can push towards getting landing that on, on TNT Sports. I don't know. Again, we'd, we're, I'm kind of playing around with everything here, playing with the money, so to speak. But look, you're right. I mean, shows-wise and things, uh, T Frank Foreign Stable has kind of been a, a bit of a lull over the few years as he's built his prospects into positions now and he's starting to bear the fruit of those with bigger fights down the line. Uh, and Eddie Hearns kind of maybe be see, maybe seen as being usurped, especially here in the UK by a lot of people, especially some of the hardcore fans. But Eddie Hearn kind of considers himself as a uh, worldwide promoter. Maybe Frank will have a claim to that too as well now that he's breaching into worldwide as well. But look, I, speaking, I, I asked this to Eddie uh, at the press conference. And I said to him, look, a little bit of bruised ego potentially here that... Look, you 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 had that meeting with Frank Warren. You had that press conference with Frank Warren. And maybe as a competitor, you'd want that to happen under the circumstances of you leading the press conference and not Frank Warren leading the press conference. And he said, and this this is the this is the bottom line here. Stone Cold would say so, bringing back the wrestling references. In. When there's money involved, when what? there's a pound, when there's a pound note involved, it doesn't <laughs> matter to him or probably Frank either who's leading, uh, as long as they're getting paid. <laughs> 